wonderful. I'm glad to tell you that we have a quorum, which is important. We got enough people here to have a quorum, which is really, really good. I'm glad for that. What does it take for a quorum? Family. All right. What do we What's have that? to have? What do we have to have for a quorum, Ken? Ten uh, percent of our membership. So we have to have 20, 20 people or twenty-three people here. So we're good. In case you're, in case you're wondering. Our denomination has, has authorized congregations like the Orchard to have meetings, business meetings, congregational meetings in an online um, format um, platform. So everything we're doing tonight, uh, at least in, in, in those eyes, are, are by the book, which I'm grateful for. All right. We need to begin with prayer. And let me do that. Our Lord Jesus, we give you thanks for the opportunity to be together. <laughs> And I pray, Jesus, that our time together, even though we're apart from each other physically, that you, by your spirit, would join us together. That's my prayer. And so, Lord, I pray that throughout our time together tonight, we would sense the move of your Holy Spirit, bring about what you desire and what you have in mind for the orchard. And, Lord, we thank you. We pray these things. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. All right. If you saw, I was fussing a bit there for a second. I was pulling up the docket, and it's here in front of me now. I say that a quorum is present. We've opened with prayer. Our first thing is to elect a clerk for our meeting, and I've already asked Ruth Coons if she would be willing to do that. She has said yes, so we need a motion. This will be our first practice. We need a motion for somebody to say, we elect Ruth Coons as our clerk for this meeting tonight. Is there a motion to that effect? George raised his hand. I see that hand, George. Thank you so much. Come on, come on. And is there a second to that motion? Bruce Lewis, so I'll give it to Bruce. All in favor of Ruth Coons being the clerk for our meeting tonight, give it the thumbs up. All right. Ruth, you're elected. <laughs> oh, John, nicely played, John. John actually used a little uh, emoticon with a thumbs up. Nicely done there, buddy. I like that. Fun. <laughs> All right. Oh. Let me, let me uh, introduce our, our budget uh, with some thoughts and acknowledge that um, the life of the orchard, um, you know, we're a, we're a nonprofit in a sense that you know, we're, not, we're not selling a good, we're not out there hustling things in order to make money. We're wholly dependent upon uh, the contribution that you, that you give to the life of the orchard. And so as your pastor, I say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much, each and every one of you who gives to the orchard. Your gifts make all the difference. Um, we're going to see here in just a few moments numbers that will be in front of you. But for me, these, these numbers are, are not I can't. It's dollars and cents. Oh, I can't. The, these numbers are hearts. Because the scripture says, Determine in your heart what it is that the Father would have you give, and give it joyfully. And so what I see before me is the expression of your heart. And I hope that you give it joyfully. I know that I do. I know that Helen and I do as we give. And so I encourage you to do so in a way that continues to um, express your, your heart and your love for Jesus uh, through a very tangible means, uh, using your gifts to do that. So thank you very much. Um, before we jump into the budget, um, I want to take the opportunity to acknowledge um, some folks within our fellowship who over the years have been giving a tremendous service to our community. And that's Lisa Tague, uh, Yvonne Lanigan, Nancy Lewis. She didn't want me to use her name, Nancy Lewis. Uh, who have uh, led our makeover ministry. And, and Lisa, unmute yourself there for a moment, if you would. Lisa Tague. 
down the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. There you hey. go. Lisa, when when was would you say that the makeover ministry began? Um, as near as we can tell, I think it was maybe fifteen. I, ja I gauge everything on how old the kids were. <laughs> Don't we all do that? Yeah. And yeah. so uh, I I know that it started before Hannah came to live with us. Uh -huh. And Hannah came when she was two. And she's 23 right now. So I, I it started slow and built. The yep. way that it was in its, um, you know, most current steady state was probably 12 years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I remember one of the first uh, meetings I had when I uh, came to serve as the pastor of the orchard was a meeting with you, Lisa, and you told me about the ministry and we talked and I was just so impressed and encouraged that you had turned your circumstance into a blessing for other people. And so Lisa, I say thank you for that. Uh, your, your cohort of, of teacher, uh, not of teachers, of teammates, um, Nancy, Yvonne, and Barb, uh, you all have given so, so very much to our community. The Makeover Ministry continues on, but tonight we're recognizing that Lisa and, and Yvonne and Nancy have, have come to a place of saying, well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over this and are saying, yeah, it's okay now to hand that off. And so I want to express to you, Lisa, and to Yvonne and to Nancy, how grateful I am for the ways in which you and your families have served. I see Paul there with you, Paul. <laughs> yeah, how many trips to 40 Ronald Street have you made? You know, your, your car drives there by itself. And, and so Paul, thank you so very, very much. And the other people who have given so greatly to see this ministry and to meet so many needs in the life of our community. So thank you, thank you very much. I know Thank you very much for saying that. I believe, though, Jesus was always and is in charge. And Amen. so I know that we don't even know what everything that's happened. And I don't know what the future will hold. But I, I know I will be in the service. Amen. Jesus calls us to yeah. do. Yeah, I know you will. So um, I want to just simply say thank you. Uh, we applaud you. Um, say thanks to you. If we were together, we would be standing. And we would say uh, to you, Lisa, to Nancy, to Yvonne, thank you so, so very much. And I also will offer just a simple prayer for the three of you, if I might. May I pray for you, please? Let's do that. Jesus, we thank you for the makeover ministry and the many, many ways you have used it to reach into people's lives. And so, Father, we pray for your continued encouragement, for your continued uh, affirmation of Lisa, Yvonne, and Nancy in the ways that they have served and continue to serve. And so, Lord, we thank you for that. Thank you that the ministry um, will, will go on. Um, circumstances require that it be different. Um, and I thank you for the leadership that's there now and pray your blessing over that as well. And Jesus, we thank you. And we pray these things in your name. Amen. Amen, amen. All right. Well, that was a little family business that we needed to attend to, but a very important business to say thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Mary Scourick, are you there and ready to talk about a budget? Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. All right. So the way this will work is that Lisa will share the screen. She'll put up on the screen information in front of you. And, and Mary will talk us and walk us through it. And again, as you have questions, um, you can put them in the chat room. And we can respond to them. Or you can wave wildly and catch our attention and we'll come back to you. Okay. All right. So Lisa, go ahead, please share the screen. Oh, is it not already sharing? It is. Okay. It is. All right. Very good. Okay. So um, as I've done in the past couple of years is I just wanted to 
um, show you a three-year trend just to give you kind of a, um, some context of you know, how we've been performing the last few years. Um, this past year was a little tough and a lot of it had to do with COVID. Um, giving was down, um, obviously expenses were down too. And um, a lot of the events we had planned um, did not happen. So um, that's really what has driven down the to overall income and expenses last year. But we did um, come out in the black. We did, um, had a little over $8,000 in retained earnings. All right. Um, so as I said, you see before you a bunch of numbers. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, I, I'm not seeing the slides. Is, if, if you're seeing the slides, give me the thumbs up. Are you seeing the slides? All right. Okay. For whatever reason, it's not coming up on my, that's right. I know it's on there. Okay. Um, All right. And the next slide is just showing you in more detail um, last year's, and I'm sorry, the, the headings on the, the um, slide, the detail is, is incorrect. It's 2019, 2020 budget versus actuals. Um, so we budgeted 722,000 um, overall income and 711 overall expenses. Um, we came in considerably lower um, because of some major events that didn't happen, things like VBS, Women's Retreat, and um, Work Camp Northeast. Um, but we did come in, as I said, in the black. So even though income, overall income was down, our expenses were also down. Okay. All right. Uh, if you do have questions, feel free to put them in the chat room across the, at, at the bottom and, and uh, or j jot them down so we can come back. And, and um, Mary, go ahead with your next slide then, please. So this is just showing um, the 2020-2021 budget. And we based the budget after, um, against the actuals from the previous year. So we're not gonna take the budget from last year and create a new budget based on that. We're gonna look at how we actually performed and base the new budget on that. So we did show an, um, an increase in both overall income and expenses. Again, given uncertainty, um, that may change a bit, but that's how we budgeted. Um, and we're calling it a provisional budget. So the session and the staff are gonna be watching this very closely month by month. All right. Okay. Is there, again, I'm not seeing the slides. So is there anything else that you have for us, Mary? No. Okay. That's it. All right. All right. The uh, form of government that we use uh, at, as at the orchard, uh, we talk about the, the session being the ones who approve the budget. Um, we bring it before you uh, so that you can understand where it is that our expenses are, are planned, where our income is, is needed, and uh, we, we present it so that you can understand this is, this is how we plan to use the resources that God has given to us in this next year. As Mary said, it's a provisional budget, meaning uh, we're taking a very close look at it on an uh, on ongoing basis. If we need to make adjustments, um, we know that uh, we will be doing that. Um, and um, I invite you, as, as best you can, with a heart of joy, uh, to support and, and um, you know, fund this general operating budget. Um, I'm encouraged in that our giving, uh, although having dropped, is not plummeted. <laughs> uh, 
uh, but it continues to be uh, an expression of your heart and your love for Jesus, and I'm grateful for that, and, and your obedience, your, your simple obedience to the Father uh, when he said, give a portion back of what I've given to you. So thank you all for that, very much so. Uh, before we move on, though, I, I will pause and ask if you have questions. I don't see any in the chat room. That might be a TV. And Ken, if I can, um, oh, you're on. I emailed oh, yeah. you the slide deck. You see yourself at the <laughs> Yeah. Pull it up on your phone. I will. Yeah, thank you. Uh, are there any questions? I see Jackie Robbins has a question. Um, Jackie Robbins, come on. She's asking, what month does the budget start? And our fiscal year is July through June. So July 1st is when our fiscal budget started. So we're two months in at this point. All right, good question. Other questions that you have? Phil Stebbins has a question. Go ahead, Phil. Um, I don't know if you can do this, Mary, but if you were to uh, have incorporated the expected income and expenses from the major events that didn't happen, how close would we have been last year to the projected budget? So um, what I did is I wanted to see how much of like, for instance, if, um, Lisa, can you go back to the slide that shows the budget versus actuals for last year? One more. Or, yeah, right here. So um, we're about 94,000 um, below the budgeted income. And out of that, um, about 39,000 was based on those big events and other ministries. So we were short about 55,000 in, Thank you. yeah. Thank you, that's what I was getting at, okay. Yeah. And in the expenses, we were down about 56,000. So we did well, and that's non-ministry. So we did well with managing both of those. All right, good question, Phil. Thank you. Yeah, those big, those big events, a women's retreat, uh, night to shine, vacation Bible school, um, uh, work camp Northeast are, are all what I call a dollar in dollar out. So it really is, uh, we're not so much supporting those from the budget as just simply the money's coming in and the money's going back out. Right. But it does influence uh, how it looks on our, our uh, numbers here before us. All right, other questions that we have. Warren has a question. Um, does a provisional budget take into account on the expense side, the reduction of the farmhouse not being <clears throat> now? And yes, when we put the budget together, we, um, we looked at just two and, two and a half months of farmhouse expenses because we were going from July 1st through September 15th. So good question, Oren. The, uh, the, the lease rate on the farmhouse uh, was about uh, $2,200 a month. $2,350. $2,350 a month. So uh, yes, we're saving uh, about $20,000 there. Uh, but those, those dollars have been um, absorbed or they've been brought back into the budget. We're not able to take them completely as um, a savings at this point, savings in the sense that we can just set those dollars aside. Um, but it, uh, the budget is, as, as approved by the session shows that we're, we plan on po uh, finishing the year in a positive position at about $8,000 or something to that effect. All right, good question, Oren. Other questions that we have? We want to be as open with you about anything that you might ask. So I encourage you, if you, if you have a question, uh, you can email it 
to me, Ken at orchardnh.org. You can email it to info at orchardnh.org. And, and we will uh, take your question and we will answer it. We will do our best. I All think right. Stebbins has a question. Go ahead. He's muted though. Got it. Um, so Ken, um, was the decision on the farmhouse made uh, for basically financial reasons or was it because we didn't need it anymore? Uh, both. Um, the farmhouse was being used uh, because of social distancing uh, only about um, by one person, Mary, um, and, uh, and many days she was there, uh, not even a full work day. So uh, for the most part, it was sitting empty. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm grateful to our landlord, Richard Flyer, for him having uh, allowed us out of the lease uh, with no penalty. And uh, we will get some escrow money that was uh, given to him uh, for major repairs. Uh, some of that will be coming back our direction. So, do you, know, do you know what his plans are for the building? Yeah, very soon, probably tomorrow, you'll see a for rent sign out front, hanging on the sign uh, for rent. And, and he would love to rent it to a person or a family in the orchard. Um, he, he very much appreciates our ministry and, and would love to see it happen uh, for our family. If you know of a family that's looking for a place, um, it's, um, it's a competitive rental rate uh, for uh, the space and the location and all of that. But that's his plan is to, is to rent the space. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions regarding the budget? Terry? And you're on mute. We support a lot of ministries. Are we going to be able to continue the support at the present level, or has that had to have been adjusted as well? Are you talking missions? Yes. Yeah, so right now the mission's overall budget went down, um, but it, we are supporting um, the same organizations at the same level. Okay. Um, Dana Tufel um, and the, the missions team puts in a, 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 what, a, like a, a extra amount of money for ad hoc uh, mission requests. And so, um, that's over and above what we have committed to the organizations that we support. Okay. All right. Good question. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm not hearing a whole lot of questions, which um, I'm grateful for, uh, because I hope that you have seen and heard, you know, a presentation that answers your questions. And, and uh, I hope that it will also um, become for you uh, a tangible means of, of seeing and understanding that the, you know, the life of the orchard as she continues on uh, is because of the faithfulness of your giving. So looking around these screens, I mean, this is the heart and the soul of the orchard here tonight. Thank you, all of you, very, very much. I appreciate it. I do. Let's move on to building on his mission. And Mary, what update would you have for us in that regard? It's actually regathering. Tim will be well, My slides say building on his mission financial status. Yeah. The only yeah. one I took out. <laughs> okay. So we want to talk about the regathering. Okay. Are, are your slides different than mine? No, that's the only one I edited right before we got on. So you're getting, you're getting the original slide deck. That's okay. the only one I took out. So okay. All right. I, I will pull that on you again this evening. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, as you know, we, we are, uh, we've been having the online services and those online services are here to stay. Um, we, we have discovered leading up to uh, uh, March 15th, uh, we had been talking about um, bringing online services into the life of the orchard and just had talked about it, but hadn't pulled, um, 
pulled the resources together to make it happen. Well, March 15th made it happen. <laughs> and and my, my great, great thanks for Jackson Scour. Woo, Jackson. Buddy, come on. Man, oh, yeah. Woo, Jackson! Yeah, Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, I, I, I had a friend, actually, as many of you know him, uh, Malcolm Witness. He said, how did you get online so fast? And I said, I found the youngest person I knew who, who knew how to make it happen. And, and Jackson was my man. So uh, I, I'm grateful, Jackson, for the way that you have helped us. Um, and we've adapted to that pretty well. Uh, we uh, have seen, like every church in America, and I don't say, I, you know, I, I, I'm not giving to generalizations, but just about every church in America has seen their online attendance drop off since Easter. It, it was skyrocketing for the first three or four weeks. We were having 160, 180 um, viewers, meaning that might be one or more people watching our online services. Now we average about 70 to 75. And that's just across the nation. That's been the pattern. Um, folks were very eager when it first happened, uh, but have dropped off since. Um, so uh, I, I think our online services have gone well, and they will continue to be a part of our ministry. Our Saturday night service, again, has been good. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, we've learned along the way what works. It's what's not the best. Uh, praise God, this past Saturday night was the first Saturday night we had to cancel because of rain. Um, and I'm hopeful that we won't have to uh, cancel it again. Uh, I'm grateful to Phil and Linda Stebbins and others who have helped with the worship and, and the folks that have stepped up and helped out with that. So thank you very much for that. Um, the... Um, plan is for this coming Sunday to start with a in-person worship service outdoors uh, on our property. Now we're going to have it on the other side of the building because the shade is a little bit more on that side of the building at 10 a.m. than it is on the other side, on the street side. And the plan is to have, uh, as we've been doing on Saturday nights, uh, social distancing, wearing of masks, and inviting people to bring along your own chairs uh, we also can work it out so that if you want to sit in your car and listen, you can do that using the FM radio. Um, but that's the plan is to start this Sunday with in-person services outdoors and um, do this for a time. It's going to get cold. <laughs> I can't do it forever. Uh, but our, our thought is, and, and I, I, I commend the wisdom of the session. Um, we have uh, wanted to, to move cautiously and carefully. Uh, with school getting back in session in our communities, uh, it is, it now is when we're more likely to see if, if large gatherings of people together in indoor spaces is going to cause the uh, the COVID um, or the coronavirus uh, to increase in our communities. And we don't have another way to know about that except just to wait and see. And so the plan is to uh, give ourselves uh, these outdoor services, uh, the online service, and for a period of time, I don't know how long, but for a period of time, um, see what happens within our communities uh, in regards to um, our schools now being back in session. So that's where we are with that. I've checked in with some of my friends who are doing online or in-person services on Sunday morning, and, and they're seeing about a uh, anywhere from a 15 to 20 percent of their people are, are willing to come to an in-person service at this time. And that also has been the pattern across the nation. Um, churches that are offering in-person services are seeing 10% um, is pretty, uh, pretty common. 
uh, response uh, rate right now and other churches a little bit more, other churches less. So there's still a, there's still a, a, a fair amount of uncertainty around all of this. So questions about that? Put it in the chat box if you want. It would be an easier question to answer if we just didn't sing. <laughs> Singing is the biggest issue to overcome. Uh, from George to everyone, is the building open for small group meetings? Yes, we're, uh, the staff uh, talked about that this morning. Um, and um, we're going to be working together with the, the session, the elders to, um, the, the attitude of the staff is, is we want to put together a, a plan uh, to um, use our space um, for small groups uh, during the week, uh, but we have to make sure that we've got protocols in place for that and cleaning and uh, people who will supervise those meetings. So uh, that, that's in the works, George. Good question. Uh, Ken, Saturday and Sunday both, or just Sunday this week? Both, both Saturday night and Sunday. Yeah, that's the plan, is Saturday night and Sunday um, uh, with the online service on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. So, other questions that you have, put them in the chat or wave your hand wildly and Lisa will do our best to direct. Chip Sutton, what do you think of John MacArthur Church in California meeting? <laughs> Good question, Chip. I disagree with him. Um, I, I think that um, we, well, I don't know. Um, if you want to, you know, if you want to look at the at the big churches in terms of uh, in giving us some direction in terms of what we think is best. A lot of folks have leaned into John MacArthur's decision to have people meeting uh, without restrictions, without social distancing, uh, and basically telling the government of California, we're going to do it no matter what. Um, there's way too many examples of uh, churches and pastors who had that attitude. Some of those pastors have, par have perished. They've died because they got COVID. It's, it's not just a couple, there's, there's several in the United States. Uh, there's been outbreaks of COVID uh, in churches that have said, no, we're just gonna do it our way. So if you wanna, you know, if, you, if, you, if you're interested, I'm, I'm more inclined to uh, follow the reasoning that Andy Stanley has given in terms of um, uh, using this opportunity to creatively uh, express the gospel and, and I don't know that it's a real strong witness to any community to say, we don't care what the government says, we're going to do it. And I don't think it's a question of, as MacArthur would suggest, that um, banking on a, on a text out of Acts where Peter and John are told to stop preaching and they say, no, we can't do that. God's told us to preach. MacArthur and others have many other means to preach. Um, and um, I, I don't know that you can lean too heavily on that text for that answer. So I hope, Chip, I hope that answers your question some. Yeah, Ken, I do agree with you on that. I think, I think your, our cautious approach is wiser in the long run. And uh, I, I respect John MacArthur, but I, I do respectfully disagree with what he's doing, but he's certainly getting a lot of press on it right now. Yeah. And, and it makes people think and wonder, well, but I, I think in the long run, it damages the credibility of our witness. And I think it says just what you said to the community that we don't really care if somebody gets sick or not. You know, yeah. we're going to, because nobody's forbidding us from preaching the gospel. Yeah. Nobody's forbidding us from using so many other means to get the, the message out. So it's not like persecution of the church. No. Uh, that's a very different, different thing altogether. If the law forbids us to preach the gospel, that's one thing we will disobey the law 
and preach Christ, but this is for the health of the community. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, uh, I, I appreciate your position. Thank you. You're welcome, Chip. Good. Other questions that you have about regathering? I am just want to second Chip's point of view. I, I agree. As a, as a doctor, um, I'm, I'm glad that you're taking the approach that you are. I, I, I think that the, the press and, and unfortunately some churches want to paint this as a issue where we're being persecuted, but the, the fact is in this country, we're not. And, and we are blessed that we are not. And, and um, I'm glad you're taking the cooperative approach that you are. Thanks, Phil. I appreciate that. All right. Do I miss worshiping with all of you? Yeah, absolutely. I do. I do. I, I miss being with my family in Christ. Um, I'm grateful for opportunities like tonight in other ways, in the online, the in-person gatherings outdoors. Um, that's, that's as far as we uh, feel we can honestly move at this time. So, and, and our leadership, you know, we're, we're across the whole board in terms of some are more eager, less some or, you know, but as we work together, we really seek to hear the mind of Christ. And, and this is what we've discerned from Jesus at this point is to go cautiously forward um, and to continue to proclaim the gospel in, in different ways. So. One of the accoutrements, you know, that Lisa and I, you know, miss, you know, during, you know, the online worship services, you know, the cross, you know, as a background for the music. Can we have the music, you know, on the platform in front of the cross? Yeah, and we certainly can. We, we have had that oftentimes. This past week was a logistics issue that <laughs> kept Jackson and Katie uh, from recording uh, in the space, but... Um, we are bringing our online recording of the worship um, leaders uh, into the facility. Yeah, so. if we could do that, you know, whenever possible, you know, it would, you know, really help worship, I think. Okay, thanks, Terry. Good input. Yep. All right, any other questions about the regathering? Terry, Rudy. Yes. Um, we'll have communion at all three services this weekend, right? Yep. Okay, just wanted to know. Yep, Linda, you have a question? You have to unmute, Linda. Go ahead. I was just saying, Lynn Stack, I think, had a question up here. Will there still be coffee hour? Uh, not at this point. Oh, the coffee hour uh, uh, online? Yeah, I thought you were, I thought you were talking about perking the, you know, getting the pots going in the back. No, no. Uh, no, the coffee hour will continue on. Yeah, um, uh, I may be uh, a little bit late, but the Sunday morning services are are going to be put together so that they coincide with ending with the online service. And if I'm not there, another member of our staff will be there to um, um, host the coffee hour and, and make sure that that continues on. And um, yes, that'll be happening. Yep. Good question. All right, can we move on to building on his mission? I'm ready, let's do it. Tim Weggy, Tim, thank you so much uh, for your continued good work. Um, things have obviously uh, slowed down a bit with uh, the coronavirus and uh, the circumstances of that, um, but slowed down in the sense that uh, the doorknob team has not been meeting as regularly, but we, we recently met together under Tim's leadership. And so, Tim, I'm going to give you uh, the, the go ahead to talk and um, make your presentation. Very good. Very good. Uh, first off, it's good to be together this evening. I think uh, probably a number of us uh, in business or in small groups or what have you, we've been seeing a lot of two-dimensional people lately. Uh, and I do look forward to the time when uh, the COVID thing is under control one way or another, and we're back to seeing three-dimensional. It's hard to believe the last time that uh, the doorknob team had a chance to present um, 
Uh, we were all together in church. I was still the chair guy working with some colleagues in the back. And we were the ones that would be laying chairs out for people that are coming in late and the visitors and so forth. But it's hard to believe it hasn't happened in months. Do miss that. I'm hoping I haven't lost that skill. And when we do reconvene, and at some point we will, um, I'm hoping it's kind of like a bicycle that you don't forget how you put the chairs out and so forth. <laughs> so um, at any rate, uh, the doorknob team, in case those of you are wondering or can't recall because it's been a while, uh, the doorknob team is uh, tasked to uh, essentially uh, identify, uh, select, and recommend the most functional effective doorknobs for the new annex facility. Uh, some of the uh, complications associated with that though are that if you were going to be putting doorknobs into uh, the facility, we need doors that they go into and if you have doors you need frames and frames and walls and if you've got walls you probably should have a foundation then you should have a roof and anyhow there's a lot of steps in between in between where we are now and getting doorknobs. So, um, perhaps more conventionally, people might think of us as a building committee, but that's a little uh, dull on the terminology side. So we did meet, as uh, Ken uh, did suggest uh, a week or so ago, uh, just to essentially review uh, where we are. And there is a recognition, fundamentally, there's no bones about it, what we have in front of us now uh, we're calling the moment is indeed new. We haven't been anything like this before. Um, nonetheless, while the moment is new, the mission itself, and again, this is the thing where we've come back to ever since 2018, I think when we started talking about in that, that uh, series of messages that Ken put out about the mission and, and who we are and where we're going, what's it all about? And the mission is in fact unchanged in as much as we're called as a body, as a people, to be uh, pointing others to Christ and his salvation. Lisa, let's see what's on the next slide. Okay, so the real, so we get, you know, so the mission is unchanged. Um, there's a recognition that undeniably this COVID thing affects ministry today. We've been spending the entire meeting uh, talking about how it affects budgets, how it affects operations, how it affects ministry. We're talking about fading back into services and so forth. No bones about it. This is a real thing. Uh, and it does affect ministry operations. As we look a little bit further, the question comes out, how does COVID uh, affect our construction plans? Let's take a look at what's on next. Uh, Lisa, go ahead. So let's, uh, let me back up. I guess we jumped ahead here. Um, let's back up. When we talk about the mission, that's the big underlying piece, the pointing others to Christ. The next level under strategy uh, or mission are the tactics. How are we going to do that? How do we deliver on this 50,000 foot view of reaching others for Christ? Ultimately, ultimately, uh, it is the belief of the doorknob team that this COVID thing is gonna wear itself out. There's either gonna be vaccines that are coming up, we're all gonna get herd immunity. I don't know if the viruses just get tired and just go off somewhere else. But at some point, just like all of these other kinds of things that have occurred historically, this will pass. And so consequently, uh, the question is uh, for us as a planning group and us as a body of believers together, um, you know, how does, how, how does that prospect, how, how does where we are today and the prospect that things will once again get to a point where we can get together as three-dimensional people, if you will, how does that affect our strategy? And the belief very much is that the assessment that's been made over the last couple of years uh, by uh, the doorknob team, by session, by the church body altogether is a recognition that integral to meeting the mission is having an infrastructure or the tools, if you will, that, and you've heard it time and again, speak, speak welcome to uh, families that have just moved in, that have seen the activity and the back and forth at church and are looking to connect. When they come in, uh, is there a space for them? Is there a space where it's safe for their children, where the children can enjoy uh, learning and being together uh, for that uh, person, that college student, or that older person that have made just moved to the community that wants to get that get connected to uh, a people 
of faith? You know, is there a place, is there small group meetings that are easily to connect? And so from a facilities perspective, um, from a facilities perspective, the infrastructure requirement, the tactic, if you will, or the tools that we have believed for the last several years and have agreed are important, we don't, from a doorknob perspective, from the doorknob team perspective, our recommendation and assessment is that when this goes, when this gets under control, that the need for the facilities that we've been talking about for the last two years, that we as a body have been accumulating funds faithfully to, to see through is still gonna be very much a part, a critical part of the tool package that is gonna be necessary to help us collectively meet the mission. So the question goes on, how does uh, COVID affect construction? Let's pop to that next page, uh, Lisa. So uh, affecting construction, um, <clears throat> question comes up, okay, where are we at with construction timing? If we have the, uh, the premise that indeed this facility is still integral as part of our tool package and meeting the mission, uh, what are the implications in terms of design? And there was some significant discussion as far as, you know, the box and what it looks like. I'm talking about the box, the footprint of the building. And there's a general assessment that what we have identified collectively as a body, the need for education space, the need for uh, a warming kitchen to facilitate the fellowship area, uh, the need for um, uh, offices and small group settings on the upper level, uh, all that in the main, really nothing has, has really changed. Now I say that with a caveat that uh, with the COVID, shall we say in the air, uh, we have spent some time, uh, I don't know if all of you know or not, but I'm in the property management business and we deal with lots and lots of buildings and construction and all those kinds of things. And increasingly, uh, uh, we have got uh, individuals that are looking at the integration of uh, air handling systems such as UV lights that would uh, are, are showing to be very quite effective in terms of um, uh, either infiltration or in uh, um, uh, negating the effects of uh, treating uh, airborne or aerosol types of elements. Uh, I spent a little bit of time on the phone with North Point uh, Construction Management, our design team, and asked them a little bit about that. And they did validate that indeed, um, a lot of places are making inquiries. Uh, one of the cool things about it is that it's uh, relatively short money to, um, uh, to uh, get UV types of equipment installed in a forced hot air um, uh, HVAC system. When I say short money, uh, again, we haven't had anything quoted out, but uh, you know, uh, uh, North Point was talking about something less than a thousand bucks. I have another operation that I was working at that uh, uh, wasn't as large as our six or 7,000 square foot annex, but they were talking about 500 bucks and they would have it installed. So, um, you know, while the box we're not looking at to, to think is going to have, is there any significant drivers for change, there, there could very well be integration elements in the HVA system that uh, we may look at to help give everyone a greater level of confidence that not only for traces of whatever might be out there, but it might just be a healthier uh, integration for air handling. Another piece is can uh, identified, and this is I don't mean to be the guy that says the glass is half full, but I guess I'm going to be that guy. Um, you know, this online business stuff, uh, that has significantly extended our footprint and our reach, and that is totally cool, and it's not going away. Uh, we all can probably remember, we'll swap stories sometime when we're all three-dimensional again, but I do remember one of the first services. Everybody remember the time when somebody was playing a song or a hymn, and all of a sudden YouTube said, enough we're done uh you know we were i don't know what their problem was but it you know uh it was at the end of the service and whatnot but things froze up it was you know i, I found it kind of amusing i'm sure the staff was horrified but at any rate um in all seriousness though one of the considerations from a design perspective potentially is that one of the uh spaces in the upstairs area be better equipped better outfitted so that this uh online um uh, online taping, online recording, online streaming, that sort of thing 
uh, are, is suited to carry on and extend that aspect of ministry. That's something, quite honestly, uh, I don't think probably any of us would have seen um, uh, prior to the COVID element. So, um, but again, the big picture being that from a design perspective, the box is still roughly 7,000 square feet. You've got an education facility at the lower level with a warming area, and then you've got the small group and office area in the top section. Question comes up about the timing of the construction plan. As you all know, and we've been talking about this since I think at the start, I want to say at the start of our um, capital campaign, which I start to lose time, but I think it was in uh, early 2019, uh, Actually, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yeah, so Tim, we, we started the capital campaign talking about it back in, in spring of 2019, and the campaign itself began in earnest on uh, first or uh, middle of June of 2019. So we're a little so more we're than just a year. We're, we're just over a year year. into it. Yep. Okay, well, thank you very much on that. Mm -hmm. uh, at the, at the get-go, you may recall that the default concept that was uh, earmarked in terms of construction was, um, uh, was likely the construction season of 2021. That was the default plan back then. Uh, the recommendation of the doorknob team at this point is indeed, that still is the default plan with a caveat. The caveat being that uh, if potentially the COVID thing is still flopping about, and you know the vaccine was just recently re uh, was recently in introduced, but there's still you know there's still concerns about social distancing, or there's a concern that you'd construct a facility and couldn't really use it at the outset. Uh, doorknob team is recommending or advising of a quote unquote Plan B that focuses on uh, revising the construction timetable to 2022. While that is a change and potentially a flexible change from 2021, uh, we're also kind of looking again that there could be some advantages to a 2022 construction timetable. Uh, those of you that are perhaps in the industry or got experience with it, um, the construction industry is red hot right now. Um, it's red hot in terms of getting contractors, prices are on the rise and have been rising. Uh, raw materials, uh, if you're buying lumber as a case in point, uh, partially because of supply chain interruptions earlier with COVID, raw materials are up. Um, so there are, it's not unusual that, that construction projects can be delayed because you, know, you, don't, you don't have available block or you don't have available sufficient uh, lumber or the plumber that you want to have show up next month is telling you that he's booked out for three. So um, there is potentially that uh, if we do end up um, holding off until 2022, that uh, there, is a, there is a anticipation that potentially, number one, the disruptions that we've had in the supply chain are going to smooth out, that uh, supplies will be uh, plentiful again, and which will help on the pricing. Uh, that this hot spot that we've currently got in construction will slow down. I will also say that there are several of us that are affiliated with the in, uh, construction industry. We're also using this time to basically uh, look at who our potential uh, bid partners may be on this with the expectation that we're going to be able to identify uh, very solid uh, potential players that are going to be able to deliver a quality product. They're going to be able to deliver it solidly and they're gonna be able to be very competitive. Again, um, uh, essentially maximizing, uh, maximizing the, um, uh, the value of what we're trying to, to develop. Uh, let's see, I think I've addressed the timing of the construction plan. Uh, let's go to the next slide, Lisa. Ah, okay. I guess I've kind of already uh, covered that. What if COVID is still lurking in the spring of 2021? Well, plan B, and as we suggested, uh, plan B might be a flexible call to deviate from our default plan to go into 2022. And I think I've kind of outlined for you a number of things that, um, uh, that potentially could be helpful. So finally, I guess, uh, let's talk again. We start at the very beginning as we approach the end, if you will, of this discussion. We, in terms of summary, the mission essentially isn't changed. Uh, as a body, as a body of believers, we're still called to 
uh, be the hands and feet pointing to others to Christ. Uh, from a tactical perspective to meet that mission, there is the continued assessment that um, this annex and parking lot area is still going to be integral as far as tools of ministry uh, for outreach, that the design, um, the design envisionment and the design work that's already gone in place still applies. Uh, there may be some, some considerations for specific pieces of equipment that might facilitate that. Uh, but essentially, uh, from a doorknob team perspective, our recommendation to session and to the body is, uh, I'm not sure if this is appropriate, but game on. It's still full <laughs> forward. Um, the last piece, uh, the last piece being that, um, again, uh, while the, the construction plan would be 2021, uh, potentially we would uh, pull plan B if we had to in the event that the COVID was uh, still active. So I think that's the summary. I think at this point in time, we've got, if there's questions, uh, it's gonna be fielded by uh, Ken and Lisa. And if I can help further, I'd be happy to do so. Yeah, all right. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. Uh, let me add to Tim's presentation that uh, obviously the building on his mission has been a topic that the, the leadership of the orchard, uh, the staff and the elders, have been talking about our building doorknob team has uh, elders and staff members that are participants in that and and i'm grateful for the uh the truth that it's a cooperative effort um, and the session at the end of the day the, the elders that you've elected to lead our fellowship um, they they're the ones that you know, carry the you know the ball across the line ultimately and say Here's what we're going to do. And in that, uh, there's a, a willingness and an attitude of let's continue to seek Jesus. Let's ask him, is there changes? Are there delays? Are there, do we want to do it sooner? I mean, uh, we, we remain open to the work of the Holy Spirit in, in, in what he would have us do. And, and so my thanks to Tim, to the building team the doorknob team uh, as we continue to cooperate and work together uh, to make this a reality. So thank you so much for that, Tim. I appreciate that. Uh, from Meyer, can Mary provide an update on the building on his mission campaign contributions? Mary, yes, she sure can. Mary, what's, what's that number you got in your mind there? Ms. Scourick. I asked her earlier today, it's uh, $736,000 uh, in receipts. I'm, I'm here. Okay, Mary, Actually, what's- 764,560. All right, 764,560. Five, five, Expenses, so, uh, we, we, the, we, we're not expending any dollars at this time. So where are we in terms of a balance? So um, we have a balance in the bank of a little over 680000 All right. Good. So from Cindy to everyone, have there been any pledges that have been rescinded? In other words, have folks come forward and said, eh, no, nope. uh, you know. We are aware that circumstances for some people have changed, and that's always met with an attitude of graciousness that said, if your circumstances change, then you, you, you must do what you have to do. Mm -hmm. But have we seen anybody withdraw their pledge? No. No. People are being faithful. And uh, I'm eager for another $100,000 uh, threshold, uh, which at our current rate, um, again, I don't want to be uh, uh, held to this, but at our current rate, we'll probably be announcing the $800,000 $800, threshold uh, here within about a couple months time, if we're at the 760 mark. All right. Uh, I'd ask the blacktop painting, what about the parking lot expansion? Could that come before the building? Uh, all right, that's from John Grosser. Uh, Tim, any thoughts about that? That's a good question. The blacktop piece is still um, very much in play. The, uh, my personal view, and this, I, I, you know, this is just my personal view, so it's not uh, doorknob approved or anything of that nature. 
But uh, my personal view is that uh, between the two projects, while they're both very important, the priority, um, the priority is the building itself. And um, so the likelihood of the blacktop going in before the building, uh, and from my personal perspective, um, likely that's, that's not the more likely scenario. Uh, yeah, I would, I would echo that, Tim. And my answer, you know, has been pretty consistent in that um, uh, we, we can find a place to park cars, we can't find a place to teach children. Um, and uh, we can't find a place, we've given up the place that we had for offices. So uh, for me, the priority is to get the building uh, uh, in place uh, as a resource for our fellowship and for our community uh, and the cars we can figure out more easily than we can. Um, so uh, we, we, uh, Bruce is waving his hand wildly. I'll come back to that. <laughs> the little bit of conversation that we've had with uh, <clears throat> a potential builder, we will bid, bid out this this process, um, this project with with several builders, but with North Point, we've had about a ten month time frame, I believe, from once they uh, get the um, construction equipment on site to when we would be able to open the doorknob. Is that about right, Tim? Ten months is what they've talked to us yep. about. Yep, from start to finish. Yeah, start to finish, about ten months time. All right. All I think right. you'll recall that we needed to, likely it would be by the end of March at the latest, um, if uh, there is a go decision, it needs to be made probably by about that time to make sure we're all closed in before cold weather comes in, if yeah. I recall. <clears throat> right. And then there's always, as with every construction project, there's always the unknown of what the town <laughs> will do. And, and we have a great relationship with the town of Londonderry. We really do. But we, we have to walk through that process with them as well. And we've been assured it's not going to be a headache. It's not going to be a hassle. But uh, you know, town politics are what they are. And sometimes you have to, just have to deal with them. Question from Deb Clark. Mary, what are the ongoing expenses for the building fund? Why does that amount change over time? So in addition to the campaign costs, um, we, uh, if you, you remember, we blessed um, the Londonderry School District last year. Um, and then we've had expenditures last fiscal year, um, things like the parking lot survey and um, some design work. Um, so those are costs. We have not had any expenses since um, well, May and going forward. So um, the, the 84,000 or 85,000 is it for right now. All right, good question. Thanks, Deb, I appreciate that. <laughs> I agree, Chip. Chip says he wants to pass out, actually hand out $100,000 bars when we cross the 100, the 800,000 mark. Me too, me too, me too. I hope that will happen. Yeah, that'd be wonderful, good. Other questions about Tim's presentation? Oh, Bruce, you're still raving your hand. Wow. Go ahead, Bruce. Unmute there, my friend. Have to unmute. Now you can. Go for it. Can I? Okay. I do. So, uh, just a couple of things for everybody. Uh, you may or may not know, but I've been uh, associated with our uh, building from the beginning of the our present sanctuary and and thank you to Tim's very e able leadership uh, into now and just a couple of things I have to just echo so everybody knows and I'm not definitely not as involved directly as he is with the construction industry but we're talking about at least today not only busy 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 people for contracting or subcontracting where costs would go up but I mean we're talking about, and if any of you have been into Home Depot, as I have, looking for a little bit of pressure treated lumber, and literally entire bins are empty. And I was talking with a friend of mine who is a first class electrician, and he said, Yeah, we're having difficulty. I said, What do you mean you're having difficulty? We can't get circuit breakers delivered in time. So, um, so what Tim is saying is absolutely true. 
Um, I would also, you know, just uh, echo the fact that, you know, we're trusting in our Lord, we're trusting the Holy Spirit to just continue to be with us, his arms around us, keep our eyes, hearts, minds open to his leading, um, that this will go ahead in a fashion that is just bringing him glory and honor uh, through the process. And that, as Tim says, you know, our mission is to create an environment that will lead others, introduce others, lead others, and uh, bring them to Christ. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. I appreciate that. Comments or questions for Tim? Or for, for, for me? Um, what what uh, questions do you have? You put them in the chat box or wave vigorously and we'll pay attention to you. I'm not as optimistic as, you know, Tim, that, you know, we're not going to have to build you know, the parking lot, you know, first because, you know, we're still going to need staging areas, you know, for materials. We're going to need a, a staging area for construction trailer if we're not able to use the you know, sanctuary and we're you know, back to you know, full capacity. You know, then, you know, we'll have to have you know, space for possibly a tent or a temporary you know, structure for worship. And, you know, we are going to be losing a number of parking places, you know, just uh, you know, so the uh, construction uh, company can maneuver uh, and get, you know, into where they need to go. So, and, you know, there are a lot, there will be a lot of things going on in our site. So I'm not, you know, sure you know, that the town is, you know, not going to, uh, you know, ask us to build the, you know, the parking lot, you know, first, you know, even, you know, because of you know, the fire issues, they've never liked the idea that uh, we park, you know, and make it difficult for the fire engines to ingress, yeah. ingress the site. So I'm not convinced that, you know, that's not going to be, uh, be a sticking point with the town. And I can remember, you know, when I was, you know, dealing with, you know, the town, it became an issue with the historic, you know, committee about what kind of plannings we had. They were insisting on, uh, you know, blue hydrangeas, and it got down to that, uh, that level of granality. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I would say, you know, we need to be sure you know, that they're not going to re you know, require us to, you know, do a you know, parking lot, you know, first. Yeah. And you know, if they do, then, you know, that's, you know, certainly, you know, we need to be able to plan for that, you know, so that we have adequate staging areas. Yes, yeah, good, good input. Good, put, good input. Thank you for that. I appreciate that, Terry. Uh, I, I will say that our present site plan uh, is approved for also our, uh, in terms of the amount of parking that uh, the town has required. Our present site plan has, has been approved for both our present building and also the footprint of the addition. So the town is not requiring us at this point to increase our parking. Uh, because that was previously approved. Uh, but you're right in saying that uh, the logistics of building uh, will take away some of our parking spaces, and that's, um, that's something we will have to consider as we get to that point. But the number of parking places were based on, you know, uh, you know, see, you know the number of you know, seats in the sanctuary. So it was yes. a seat for every, you know, 300, you know, it's one, one seat, uh, you know, so we, um, there's one parking place for every three seats. You know, so that's how we came up with the 100 parking places. And so that was, you know, just, you know, people, you know, in that one building. So when you look at, you know, the occupancy you know, for, for the 77,000 square feet, you know, it, you know, it'll be a different calculation. And the fact that they know that we've already exceeded, you know, our 100 parking uh, space requirement and we've uh, foregone, you know, the uh, the farmhouse parking, you know, that's a little more problematic. Okay. All right. Thanks, Terry. I appreciate that. So from Linda, uh, Linda Bates, is there a way to pay up the current church loan earlier, like using some of the farmhouse former rent to pay down an expense that has interest, I'm assuming? Yes, our, our, uh, our mortgage has an interest payment on it. It's a, it's a decent rate. Um, we have never, we've not at this time looked at refinancing it. Um, 
the monies that are in building on his mission uh, have been uh, received under the understanding that they would be going towards um, the expansion of our facility. Uh, if we were to use those dollars for some other reason, we would have to come back to the whole fellowship and, and everybody would have to be in agreement with that. So uh, uh, that's the answer to your first question. And then um, the money that we're saving by not renting the farmhouse, as we said earlier, was um, has been absorbed into our general operating budget, uh, with a portion of that being um, projected um, finishing in the uh, in a positive position going forward. So I hope that answers your question, Linda. Does it? Does that help? No. Okay. What's what remains in your mind? Go ahead. I don't know why. Well, I don't know finances very well. Okay. But I do know that interest rates tend to be a lot of money. And if we're in a position where we need to be watching our, our dollars, it would seem like the old loan would be squared away. It just seems to me, but then again, I don't know my finances. Yeah, well, that, you know that that is a uh, again that that is a possibility, but I would have a that I would be very hesitant about that because that's the the monies were received not to pay down our mortgage. The monies were received to um, build our building. So I want to stay with that in terms of uh, what we've said to our people. So, does anyone know how much by saying no twice? <laughs> How much interest are we then going to pay that we could have saved? That's a good question. I don't know. Uh, Mary would have to have that and have that figured out for us. So, but that's a good question. Uh, that'll take a little work to give you an answer, but we'll find it for you. Uh, from the Stebbins, I'll be with you in a second, Chuck. Mortgage interest rates are down. Have we looked at refinancing? No, we haven't, but that's a good question. I think it's worthwhile. I will add that uh, commercial lending rates are very different than residential lending rates. And while you've seen a, a fairly significant reduction in residential lending rates, commercial rates are still kind of where they're not far from where we are right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. We're borrowing, my operation, we're borrowing money and it's about where we've, uh, it's about at the 4.75% level. Yeah, and that's about right where we are, if not just a little bit low, below that at this point. Yeah, I think we're a little less than 4.75. All right, other questions that you have? Good questions. Chuck, you had a question. No, actually, he just answered my question. All right, good. Because I was wondering if they, there was a difference between house rates and, uh, you know, building rates. Yeah, the commercial rate. So my, my, your question, my question was answered. All right, excellent, excellent. Other questions on anyone's part? It's, it's likely as, as... Is our property still in current use? Is our property still in current use? All right. Uh, a, a portion of our property is still in um, uh, un under its ag agricultural designation, Terry. Uh, the property that we have developed, uh, its its status changed with the town. In what way? Well, it, it, the rating before was that we were it was an agricultural use, and, and our where our building is now is no longer an agricultural use. So, so we were able to uh, satisfy our current use penalty, or we did. Yes, okay. uh, we it was uh, it was based upon the total number of uh, acreage that was developed, and with our total property, uh, we uh, we were just under the limit, if I remember correctly. It's been seven years ago. As I did the telemetry to figure that out. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate that. 
All right, uh, Cheryl, I see that hand. Yes. Yes. I tried to do on the chat, but I didn't know how to send it. Okay. <laughs> um, just, uh, is there a minimum amount of funds that we need um, in hand to um, begin construction? Is there a certain amount that we need to have, or do we need that whole, that whole amount? How are we handling that? Uh, I'll let Tim answer that, because he understands finance. Yes, thank you. Um, I will say that uh, where we last left off, uh, there was a concept. The, the, obviously, the preference is that we're, we've got cash on the barrel head and uh, we're paying right from cash. But second to that, uh, if we were still short, uh, the concept was that um, our commitment to building infrastructure or to building operations would not exceed the combination of our current debt uh, as well as okay. uh, what was being expended on, on lease payments. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All right. All right, good. Other questions that you have? Great questions, everybody. Hey, you know, Tim, just as a heads up, you know, it's a former appraisal of you know, the banks are going, when we go for financing, if we require an appraisal, yeah, then the highest and best use of our property during COVID could well be office and not as a worship facility. You know, so, you know, that may impact you know, the timing of our ability to you know, receive the financing. Okay. And we're also going to be pressed, you know, with Woodmont because, you know, as far as office space and available space, there's a lot more available you know, space, you know, now than there was, you know, when we launched, you know, the first building campaign. Okay. So, so just bear those, those, you know, factors in mind, you know, when, uh, you know, you deal with the bank for financing. All right. Good input, Terry. Thank you. I appreciate that. You're speaking from your own uh, area of experience and expertise, which I appreciate. Thank you. All right. Other, uh, other questions? Tom Croto. Yes, sir. Unmute there, buddy. Um, so we, we did talk about the um, where we are for uh, the campaign, but where did we expect to be right now? Is there a, you know, like a, a mark? Are we where we were expecting to be? Or are we below that, above that? Mary, what? how would you answer that? Um, I don't have the fi all the figures right in front of me, but since we're about halfway to our goal, I would say we're ahead, um, given that it's a three-year campaign and we're just a little over a year into it. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. You all have been very generous, which I appreciate. I do. All right. Other questions? Okay. If you have questions that are not answered, uh, uh, if something comes up, um, let us know, ask the question, send it to me, send it to info at orchardnh.org or to my email address, can at orchardnh.org, and we will do our best to answer your questions. Um, so we're moving towards um, uh, the season of the year where we begin to uh, prayerfully look for new elders to serve in the life of the orchard. Orchard is an elder supervised staff led church in, in the spiritual oversight of the church. We look for men and women who are good and godly men and women to, to serve as elders. And Eric Meyer, part of the process is that we elect three people from our fellowship uh, to serve on that committee, and we need to officially do that tonight. What else would you add to that? I think Oh, you froze up, my friend. <laughs> yeah, he'll come back around. So Eric, Eric Meyer and Chelsea Honeywell are the two elders uh, that are on the nominating committee. And then the idea is that we will elect Jen Croto, Barb Puccino, and Susan Gauss uh, as members. Um, and um, that's what we need to do tonight. So is there a motion to that effect to elect uh, those uh, three women to serve as 
uh, at-large members for the nominating committee. Is there a motion? I move. Tom Crotto says yes. He, he's getting his, he's giving his wife the nod there. <laughs> yeah, thanks. All right, Tom. We'll say that Tom made the motion. Is there a second? I'll say Aye. Uh, we'll give it to Dana Tufel. How about that? All right. Mm -hmm. All in favor of nominating those three to serve at large members on the nominating committee, give me the thumbs up. Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Good. Good, good, good. Yay. Uh, we're getting close to the end and these end, end of the meeting here tonight. So. Um, I want to encourage you again, if you have a question that hasn't been answered, uh, if you thought I have a thought or a comment, an idea, uh, bring it forward. Uh, the, the task, the clear command of the leadership of the orchard is, is to represent the mind of Christ. We, we don't, I don't ever want to say that Jesus can't speak to us. And, and so if you've got an idea, a thought, something that's percolating in your heart, bring it forward, bring it forward. Let's, let's hear it, let's talk about it. And, and it'll be our job to pray through, to discern and to ask Jesus, what is it uh, that uh, you would have us do with this? So I miss you all. I miss being able to be with you. It's been great tonight to see so many more of you. Uh, than um, I have seen in a long time. So is there a motion for the session to approve the minutes of this congregational meeting on behalf of the congregation so that we don't have to convene, uh, uh, reconvene to approve the minutes? Is there a motion to that effect? I make a motion. All right, let's give it to Bob Getchell. Bob Getchell's got it. <laughs> nice. All right, and is there, is there a second? Bob, Bob Intron, are you waving at somebody? Or are you making a mo Are you seconding the motion? Please, I'm please. The motion. All right, I'll we'll give, give we'll give it to the Bobs. Bob Getzel made the motion. Bob Intron seconded the motion. All in favor? <laughs> all in favor? Say yes. Thumbs up. Yes. 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 Nice. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? I so move. Who is that? You, Jason? You betcha. <laughs> All right, Jason Allen, he made the motion to adjourn the meeting. Is there a second? I'm second it. Bob Getzer, you're jumping on it, buddy. Come on, nice. Good. I have to do it. There you go. All right, Bob Getzer. Yeah, I have to make a little joking mood. There you go. You're in a joking mood. Look out, look out, world. Look out, <laughs> world. All right. So there's a motion to adjourn our meeting. All in favor say yes. 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 Yeah, nice. All right. Any opposed? How about if I pray for us? Our Lord Jesus, we say thank you for this night and for our time together. Father, we continue to look to you. We are grateful for our Savior. We are grateful for your spirit. And so, Father Jesus, spirit, continue to be where you alone rightfully sit you are the head of the church and so we seek to follow you in all things thank you for my brothers and sisters in christ and our time together tonight and jesus i pray these things in your name amen 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 god bless you all thank you so very much lisa thanks for being our our host and our moderator god bless good night see you on saturday or sunday in person or online all right <laughs>